Today, allegations about our team member Sifu will circulate. I want everyone to know that I was aware of this and decided that the past of an individual doesn't determine their future. I choose to value the time we spent together without knowing his past more than anything. This is how my morning started as soon as I woke up. So apparently Sifu, who is the CFO of Frog Nation, co-founder of Wonderland, was doxxed, meaning that they found out who he actually is. He was the same guy who was a co-founder of Quadriga CX, which was an exchange in Canada. And he was also known at the time as Michael Patrin or Patrin. So this was a Canadian exchange that collapsed in 2019 after the founder, Gerald Cotton, disappeared with $169 million. And the story doesn't end there. Of course, because of this news, the price of W Memo, the price of time have all fallen really, really bad in the last 24 hours. You can see that currently we're down 35% in the last 24 hours. It's gone as low as around 14, 15,000. It's currently sitting around $22,000. So we're going to talk about what should eventually turn into some sort of Netflix series because it is insane. This guy has supposedly been scamming people and scheming on people back since like 2003. And as of recent, he was in charge of a $1 billion treasury. So now it's been put into a vote to get him removed. I honestly don't think there should even be a vote. I think this should just be removed, just cut loose, cut him off, and that's it, and try to move forward. Because the longer you let this sit, the worse it is overall for Wonderland. But either way, let's go ahead and jump into this insane story. So I guess we should start back with Danielli's tweet here this morning. He went on to continue saying that many people in the world are judged by their early mistakes. This comes prevalent into the life of ex-inmates that can't get access to financial services after being felons. One of the reasons why blockchain technology and DeFi is so powerful is that it has no bias about your past. I have no bias about Sifu. He has become a friend and part of my family and if my reputation of judgment will be hit by his docs, then be it. All frogs for me are equal. As I fight for him, I will fight for anyone else that has proven to me to be a good actor despite the past. I keep looking forward into the future rather than crystallize back. Hope you do it too. And for a quick summary of Sifu's background here, in 2005, he pled guilty to credit and bank fraud. In 2007, he admitted burglary, theft, and computer fraud. In 2018, he and his partner lost access to $115 million in customer funds. I think it was 163. And that's not all, but we'll touch on the rest in a little bit. First, let's go through the thread of Zach XBT, which basically what this guy does, he's like an investigator for people involved in the crypto world and influencers and, and things like that. And he kind of basically tries to shine a light at when they're doing things that they're not supposed to like shilling coins for for that they're getting paid from without letting the public know that it is public advertisement that they're getting paid to do it right so he's basically a detective on the blockchain i believe he is the person who broke the story so let's start with his thread here so after this initial tweet about Sifu being the co-founder of Quadriga CX, Michael Petrin. He said that he had confirmed this with Danielli over messages. If you look at their DM conversation, you can see that he said, I came across something rather odd about that. He said about Dubai and he said about Sifu. So now I'm kind of wondering what happened in Dubai, right? But anyways, Danielli said, what's up? And he said, well, he's the Quadriga guy. And then Danielli replied, I cannot confirm, but I have thought about this a lot. And Zach said, dangerous to be working with, sir. So, I mean, that's kind of weird, right? He says, I cannot confirm, but I have thought about this a lot. That kind of raises red flags for me because then he went on to admit in his tweet that he knew about this for a month, but he couldn't confirm there, but he's thought of a lot about it. Very confusing for me. So then Danielli spoke about how he was going to handle this if it were to come out. And he, he basically is saying he doesn't know how to handle the situation 
and you know basically how to save wonderland once this news came out because he knew exactly what was going to happen he went on to say that they started wonderland together without knowing and that he thought he was more careful Daniele went on to say that he feels like sifu is a good man that he spent a lot of time with him recently then he was asking zach for how he thought he should get him out he was obviously aware of the risk to his reputation and zach asked him you're willing to put your entire rep on the line and also risk everyone's money so Daniele said that no he was not and Zach told him well that's what you're doing which it's definitely true you can see here that prior to Quadriga Michael helped run an identity theft ring called Shadow Crew in which he later pled guilty to he goes on to say that he could have never expected this and could not sit on it any longer especially after the events experienced earlier this week with time so maybe this conversation wasn't today maybe it was a month ago and that's why Daniele knew for a month but to know for a month and not put it out it's like something should have been done once you found out you know I don't know maybe Daniele feared for his safety because of other things in this guy's past but it's definitely disappointing I've definitely been a big believer in Daniele and and you know and had some and put some trust into him obviously can't trust people that you don't really know but for as much as you can put trust into a project i only trusted wonderland because of him right so zach went on to say that quadriga ties back to sifu and basically another guy here said that he had labeled sifu's wallet aka michael patrin and then when you look at michael patrin's personal wallet you can see that it's Sifu's wallet. He literally didn't even try to hide his tracks. He was using the same wallet that he used before that was already tied to his old account. So if you think that's the end of this story, it is not. There's so much more when people started actually looking into this guy's background and his past. So Sifu aka Michael Patrin aka Omar Danani. So apparently his real name is Omar Danani, and then he changed it to Michael Patrin. So like we said earlier, in 2005, he had credit and bank fraud. In 2007, theft, burglary, and more computer fraud. And then in 2018, him and his partner lost access to $100 million of Canadian exchange users' funds. But that's not the end of the story. Best of all, his co-founder has been missing or dead after a trip to India. No one has any access to the keys and many Canadians lost their life savings. And then the kicker here is that Sifu, aka Michael Patrin, aka Omar Danani's personal wallet has gone from $45 million to $450 million in one month. A bit strange, right? And then apparently the money started to flow back out of the wallet in the last hour, which is so the wallet's now down to around, around $200 million. And from what I've read, that money went back into the Wonderland wallet. So here's a picture of Sifu, aka Michael Patrin, aka Omar Denani. So in Quadriga, they basically ran a Ponzi with chain evidence showing that Cotton may have traded with the user's funds on BitMEX. They would use the deposits of new users to pay for the withdrawals of old users eventually everyone's withdrawals will be stuck and processed for weeks and weeks until eventually cotton went on a trip to india mysteriously cotton died on this trip to the Krons. Many believe the death was faked with weird details around the issuance of his death certificate, wife's reaction, etc. So many don't buy that he died. With this event, many Canadians lost their life savings, some six figures worth or more. The courts tried to reclaim what they could, but most of the money was gone or missing. But of course, Sifu still seemed to get away great. He and his wife ended up with the majority of the assets. His co-founder Cotton was gone and with him $170 million disappeared. Canadians left helpless, but Sifu laughing all the way to the bank, his funds were safe or Sifu's funds were Safu. Before that, in 2005, he was running an identity theft ring, literally part of an online criminal mafia that committed credit card theft, ID theft, and other Ponzi schemes. His name back then was Omar Danani. 
They called it shadowcrew.com and Omar was arrested as part of six others in the USA. He did time for this stunt but soon after went to Canada and changed his name again. This time around is where he made a mistake and registered various companies under his new moniker, Michael Patrin, but did so alongside his relative Nazmin Danani. It didn't take long after that for journalists to connect the dots. Classic guy Omar Danani used the alias Volor, Volor, not sure how to pronounce it, which in French means thief, during his time with Shadow Crew. In between all this, he still had time to be part of processing anonymous purchases of of the earliest digital currencies. It's not the crypto we know today. This was full of money laundering, child porn, criminal activities. But of course, Omar didn't care. He's just there collecting the payments and making his quick buck. He also ran another Ponzi scheme called Midas Gold basically took people's money and he didn't give it back. This guy's been around since 2002 before most of you were probably even born or in this space. I've seen him post in forums and I know the vow acts he is capable of. Of course, these are just the things he's actually been caught for, so that's only the parts that we know. Who knows what he's done that we haven't been able to catch him, so we course don't know. He continues by saying that he always wondered where this piece of trash went next. Glad we found him gives our entire industry a terrible rep and he has destroyed people's financial well-being. To know that he made off with $450 million breaks my heart. And then he put update Sifu has been removed from his position. So apparently this guy even had plastic surgery to change his face. So if you guys want to know even more, you can follow this guy right here and check out his deep dive on this. This guy literally provides documentation on every single thing, you know, his arrest, his release, all the exchanges that he's ever uh, put together, all the complaints. Just so many different things. This guy really, really went in on a deep dive here. I don't wanna go through it because we'll be here forever. But it's interesting to see that Cotton magically died and he was never buried. Users didn't get their funds back with that excuse. I'm even reading things out there that Sifu might have had something to do with the death. Now that we got that whole story out of the way, now what's next for Wonderland? How does it move forward? What's gonna happen to the many of us that have had funds in there that are now down 90%? So for starters, Daniele posted a statement eight hours ago regarding you know everything that's been going on. He basically talks about everything that we've already covered and he said that he found out about this a month ago and that he believed in second chances. Then he goes on to say that now that he's had time to reflect on what's happened, he decided that Sifu needs to step down till a vote for his confirmation is in place. See now, there's an issue with this because even if we all vote, the people with the most amount of shares are the team members, right? So I, I imagine Sifu has probably more shares than all of us put together. So how is this a fair vote? Although they make it seem like it's a community vote, the people with the most shares are the ones that direct the decisions of these votes. So I believe he just needs to step down. There shouldn't be any, any type of vote. There should be no votes. He needs to be removed. End of it. That's it. Now, another thing to note is that he did go on to say that buybacks will still happen. Of course, Wonderland's price is currently in shambles. As you can see, the current price for Wonderland is 23000 and the backing per memo is at 44,000. So that would mean that they need to buy back until the price goes back up to this price, right? So let's see if that actually happens. They do have $687 million in the treasury. So hopefully they stick to their word and they make this happen so that we can at least salvage our situation and get some of our money back out because we're all gonna end up getting out at a loss if it only goes back to 44,000. I don't know about you, but I was in when it was over 100,000, right? I myself, probably like most of you, is currently down big. So furthermore, Sifu actually posted 
in the Discord this morning, as you guys can see. He said, good morning, fam. I'm sure that many of you have been concerned about the recent attacks and docs. I am taking precautions for my safety and have taken steps to ensure that there is no risk to Wonderland assets if anything happens to me. All assets are secured by Multisig, and as Danny mentioned in his statement, the FUD regarding that needs to end. I don't want anyone to feel like they were tricked or manipulated in any way, so I have decided to cease all treasury management activities until a vote regarding my future employment has concluded. As I stated on numerous occasions, I work for you, my backers. If you no longer feel comfortable with me leading this app, as I have done since founding it only four short months ago, I will not want to be here. I have enjoyed my time with all of you through both the good and bad times. I got to know many of you through my daily AMAs and I'm very proud of the community which we have built. I fully expect this vote to not pass despite what Danny seems to think as most of the world does not believe in judging people for who they are today. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm honestly very heartbroken. Oh no. And to be leaving my fam at Wonderland and love you all. Wow. So I do believe in giving people second chances, but this guy's not only had second chances, he had third chances, he's had fourth chances and fifth chances. Could he have changed? Is he a different person by now? Maybe, right? I do not want him handling a treasury worth a billion dollars. That is not the position for him. If he wants to stay as you know part of the team in some form of way, all right, but it has to do nothing with handling money. Maybe he could just be on the ideas team, right? Maybe a community manager, but he should not be dealing with any money. He should have no way of ever touching any of the money. That's the type of 10th chance that I'd be willing to give him because people do change, especially as you grow older. In our 20s, we all make stupid mistakes. We all do stupid things, some worse than others. So they posted the link where you could vote. However, even when I'm trying to vote, and look how complicated they make this. This is very confusing. It says Sifu as treasury manager. So you would come down and be like, no, replace Sifu. Yes, keep Sifu. It says, should the founder Sifu remain as treasury manager or should we look for someone to replace him? So like, if you just read the, the first part, should Sifu remain as treasury manager or should we look for someone to replace him? Like, it's just a little confusing. So make sure to read the whole thing and you have to put no replace Sifu. Then when you go to vote, as you can see, nothing happens. Also, you can't see the results of the vote. So there's no way to know what's going on with this vote right now, right? Danieli goes on to say that he's not going to issue any further statements until the vote ends. Treasury funds are safe and in the hands of the multi-sig. Other projects, Abacadabra and Popsicle, have nothing to do with this. In his most recent tweets here, he says tomorrow they will add a proposal to give back all the funds at treasury value or continue buybacks and add new management. So I think due to this tweet is why uh, the price has somewhat stayed kind of stable and gone back up to 22,000 currently. He's going to give the option to either, you know, use all the treasury value to give pay everybody out and i would assume you know that would be the end for wonderland or if everyone wants the project to continue then they will continue doing buybacks and add new management to run the treasury now what would i want i'm not sure at this point i still have to reflect a bit more about the situation um i need more information i think onto how it would run if they were to continue the project who would be running the treasury you know and and yeah i mean it's it's tough right now it really is just like you guys i'm down about 80 to 90 percent of my investment in the project so i think we've covered everything here guys this has been an insane morning insane story what's been happening has just been crazy you know it's been just so weird for the last like week or so at this point where i think a lot of people must have known you know in the in the past week or so which is why prices were dropping so hard if you look back starting at the beginning of the month which would have been around when Danielli found out there has just been so much dumping in the market just this month alone we're literally down about 80 percent just on the month guys if you look to from the all-time highs we're down about 84 percent right so it's just been insane 
to say the least. I don't know where this goes from here. We'll just have to, you know, reevaluate in the next day or two, see what happens. For me personally, there's no point in me selling at this point because the price is just so low. So I'm just gonna have to wait to see if on this proposal that might be coming out, if they do the buybacks to take the price back up to over $40,000, at that point, I'll probably sell. Or if they dissolve the treasury to pay everybody back, then I'd rather cash out in that way. Just because I don't, if I cash out now, I'm cashing out at a 80% loss, right? So that's currently where I'm at. You know, everyone's going to have different opinions on this. There's no way that nobody could have ever, ever known that this was going to happen or because this is the most insane situation possible, right? This is why we, we tell you, we told you on the, on the videos that we did, you know, make sure that you're not putting huge amounts in this because these a lot of these are experiments a lot of these we don't really know who the team behind it is the only person we knew here was Danielli which is why I um, the only person we knew here is Danielli which is why I kind of put a little bit more trust in this project you know versus others I don't jump into a lot of these projects just because of this there's so many things in so many unknowns right so for now I'm just sitting tight waiting to see what updates happen i'm not currently selling yet i am looking to exit this however i'm trying to salvage as much as possible at this point i'm honestly probably going to stay away from rebasing dows for a while at this point i still have a small investment left in olympus which it's also down about 80, I think 80% as well. So for the time being, I'm pretty much done with rebasing DAOs. I am staying away from those. I will see where we can possibly go next from here. So I'll keep you guys updated as always. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications for more videos like this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button. And if you have any questions, of course, drop it in the comments. If you have any opinions, like tell me what you guys think about this whole absurd situation. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one. As always, peace and love.